died, tragically, he died in June of 1966, right before, only three or four months before passage of the Wilderness Act that he had authored and, and fought courageously for for eight years and shepherded through the, the uh, legislative process. But, but Zani, as he was affectionately known, uh, passed away, un unfortunately, in June, knowing at that time that the, uh, that the Wilderness Act was really a fait accompli. It was, it was going to happen. Uh, it, it's all greased and ready to go and it, the, the wheels were turning and it was uh, a definite reality that it was going to occur. So he knew that when he passed away, but he did not live to actually see Lyndon Johnson sign it into law on September 3rd, 1964. Right. He was a word master, just to read. Oh my that goodness! Actually, you know, he was in present day uh, perspective a very short act as far as a few pages, but it's it's literature to read it. it it's it's a it's a work of prose. It, it truly is, and 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 coming up uh, with, with words like wilderness is an area that is untrammeled. That that's brilliant when you think about it, and, and that word is often confused with trampled. You know, we, an area that we that's untrampled. Well, yeah, we don't want to trample it, but really, a trammel is old English for net. Yeah. And so it, when we say untrammeled, it's unnetted by by humans. Mm -hmm. and that's what I was trying trying to draw it earlier when we were talking about the the restraint. I, I had. I was wondering, actually, what were you doing in 1964? Were you? I was college? a student at the uh, learning how to how to cut down trees. So you were learning how to destroy Montana. wilderness. That's yeah, what I was yeah. doing. In, 1964 at yeah, the University of Montana. Guess. In we, fact, at that time I was at forestry camp at Lubreck having a ball. I mean, I, I love forestry school, but I, I look back on it now and I certainly wouldn't select that as a major. I'd, I'd go into, uh, into resource conservation and environmental studies, certainly, but, but, I, but in those days, uh, those options didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And, and so uh, I wanted to to be a steward of the forest and thought that getting becoming a forester was the way to do that. And I, yeah. I had in mind to go through a career path within the agency. My dad had gone through forestry school in the 30s and at U of M and then so I was by golly I was going to follow in his footsteps. He didn't pursue that as a, as a, uh, as a uh, vocation but uh, that's what he did in the 30s during the depression and and so anyway, I I just uh, that that was my dream, and I envisioned myself becoming a forest ranger someday. Uh, another uh, person is Stuart Brandborg. Oh gosh, uh, you know I met Stuart Brandborg for the very first time in 1968. I was um, I was in basic training. I, I had completed my master's uh, on the Magruder Corridor controversy. At that time, Stewart was the head of the Wilderness Society in Washington, D.C. And I was stationed at Fort Belvoir, Virginia, undergoing my officer uh, basic training in, at, uh, uh, as, as an engineer, as a combat engineer, getting ready to ship to Nam. And so here I am in D.C., or right next to D.C. at Fort Belvoir, and uh, I went in to meet Stewart because I knew his dad so well. I knew old Guy Brandborg really well and had not met Stewart. And Stuart had, had read my thesis and he said, Bill, he says, will you write an article about the Magruder controversy for our magazine, The Living Wilderness? That's what they called the magazine in those days, The Living Wilderness. And I said, well, you know, I, I, I might consider it uh, Brandy, but, but you know, I, if I go into academia or something, I don't want to bias my objectivity as a, you know, uh, and he, oh boy, did I ever get a talking to over that one? He says, he says, you better decide right now what you stand for. <laughs> you know, if you're going to play that game, you're. Uh, why did you even investigate the Magruder Corridor controversy? Uh, yeah, Brandy gave me a pretty good talking to, and I, I went back to the base, thought about it, and the next day I got a hold of him and I said, Brandy, you're absolutely right. It'll be an honor to write the story for the Living Wilderness. I. I'm on board with you, and so I did that.